guys, welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Berg and today we're going to be taking a little look at the top 10 most radioactive places on earth. Now radiation is naturally everywhere. It's in the air, in the ground, there's even some in the food you eat and the water you drink, but that's just natural low level stuff. But thanks to humans with our nuclear power plants and our nuclear bombs, there are now places on earth that are very radioactive indeed. So now let's find out where you should stay clear of unless you want to turn into the Hulk. Starting things off at number 10 now with the Hanford site, USA. In Washington state lies Hanford site where in 1943 a nuclear reactor was responsible for producing the plutonium used in America's first nuclear bombs. The decades of production that followed was done in very unsafe conditions by today's standards and a lot of radioactive material was leaked into the surrounding air and river. In fact, an estimated 53 million US gallons of radioactive waste was left in the tanks and contaminated groundwater spread for up to 200 miles around. In fact, this one site alone is thought to contain about two thirds of America's America's radioactive waste. All right, next up at number nine now, we have the Mediterranean Sea. Now I know what you're thinking, how could this beautiful body of water that separates Europe and Africa be dangerous? It looks lovely. Well, apparently those calm waters are covering what could be one of the biggest nuclear disasters of all time. It's thought that an Italian mafia gang has been secretly dumping nuclear waste there for money since 1994. The extent of how much has been dumped has only recently started to come to light and some people people claim they are still doing it to this day. Either way, there are thought to be hundreds of barrels at the bottom of the sea containing radioactive waste and if they do break, their contents will devastate the entire region. Incredibly, we're going to be staying with the same Italian mafia now for round number 8 because they've also been doing the exact same thing on the coast of Somalia. Some estimated 600 drum barrels of toxic radioactive waste from all over Europe is thought to have been dumped here by the mafia. It's thought the Somalians lack of government regulation attracted the criminals who knew they could probably get away with all of this and it seems like they pretty much have. In 2004 a tsunami there washed up rusty barrels of toxic waste that seemed to date back to the 1990s. Alright moving on to number 7 now we have Sellafield in the UK. This nuclear site has produced many tons of radioactive plutonium but an estimated quarter of a ton of the stuff has ended up in the nearby Irish Sea over the years making it the most radioactive sea on the planet. There have been a number of accidents there including when radioactive water started spreading into the surrounding land. They finally did manage to plug that leak though 50 years later. Yeah. Despite plugging that leak, the radioactive waste has actually spread so far that a study done in the 1990s found traces of plutonium in children's teeth from all over the UK. And surprise, surprise, the closer they lived to Sellafield, the more plutonium they had in their teeth. Hmm. Now, radioactive teeth might sound like some sort of cool new superhero movie, but uh, yeah, it's actually a little bit more dangerous than that. All right, next up at number six now, we have the Mayak Chemical Combine. Back in the 1950s, the Soviet Union set up this site to produce plutonium and uranium for their nuclear weapons program. Now, their method of disposing the radioactive waste from here was basically to just mix it with water and pump it into the nearby river. Now, most of us aren't scientists, but I bet we can all agree that's not a really good idea. Doesn't sound like one. When that started to get too polluted, they then tried to store the waste under a lake, but when a drought evaporated the water, it exposed tons of waste and the winds spread it across 900 square miles. The radiation is thought to have affected about a million Russians living nearby. And when the plant was finally closed, the average male lifespan there was just 45 years old. Coming in at number five now, it's Melu Su in Kyrgyzstan. Now this site was also set up by the Soviet Union to mine for uranium ore and it did just that, producing an estimated 10,000 metric tons of the stuff from 1946 to 1948. The radioactive waste rock was then left behind and it wasn't just one or two or like 10 rocks, it was about 1.96 million cubic meters of radioactive waste rock. And do you know what the worst bit is for the hundreds of thousands of people that lived in that surrounding area? Well, earthquakes happen there and that radioactive rock ends up all over the place. In fact, in 2005, 300,000 cubic meters of it fell into a nearby river. Nasty, nasty stuff. But it's not all that bad, guys, because they did manage to make a few nuclear bombs out of all of this. So, yay. 
Moving on to number four now, we have the Polygon in Kazakhstan. Now you're not going to believe this guys, but hold on, guess who built this? The Soviet Union. I know, mental. The Polygon is where the Soviet Union tested its nuclear weapons and by testing I mean they blew up nuclear bombs right there. Over the 40 years from 1949 to 1989 they tested their first nuclear bomb here and liked it so much they went on to drop 455 more. Now this site was chosen to become a nuclear wasteland because they said it was uninhabited despite an estimated 700,000 people living there. Hmm. Well perhaps it was the Soviet Union's goal to make it uninhabited because an estimated 200,000 people have now had their health damaged by the leftover radiation. Alright coming in at number 3 now we have the Siberian Chemical Combine in Russia which was actually set up by the French. I'm just kidding, of course, obviously it's the Soviet Union. Now they produced materials for nuclear weapons for almost 40 years before being turned into a storage site for radioactive material. On April 6, 1993, a tank that contained a radioactive mixture exploded. It destroyed a large part of the building and the toxic gas was quickly spread by the wind over 200 square kilometers. As for the rest of the waste there, well, an estimated 125 thousand tons of it are just sitting there uncovered and the radiation is thought to be spreading into the frozen land around to the point where the icy temperatures and the wild animals of Siberia probably aren't the only thing that could kill you. Alright next up at number 2 now we have a very famous site on our list, it's Chernobyl in Ukraine. Now this was the site of the worst nuclear power plant accident in history. Due to very poor design features and lack of safety procedures, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant entered a complete meltdown on Saturday the 26th of April 1986. The explosion caused a huge cloud of radioactive smoke to drift over most of Europe. The fire was eventually put out and the smoke did eventually dissipate but the site of the explosion has remained highly radioactive ever since. Tens of thousands of people were evacuated from the area leaving it a pretty much radioactive ghost town. The international nuclear event scale ranks disasters like this from level 1 up to level 7. The Chernobyl disaster is one of only two two events in the world to be classified at level 7. The other is actually our number one most radioactive place on earth, Fukushima in Japan. On March the 11th 2011 an earthquake off the coast of Japan caused a tsunami that hit the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The 13 meter high wave flooded the generators that were providing power to the plant's cooling system. Now with no cooling system the reactors began to overheat until 3 out of 6 of them entered a full blown meltdown. The radiation began pouring out of the facility and into the nearby sea. In total it's thought that the level of radiation release was more than 100 times the amount than both of the nuclear bombs that were dropped on Japan at the end of World War II. An estimated 6 million people were exposed to this radiation and this isn't just some sort of story from a history book either. Even as you watch this Japan is still fighting to contain this horrific nuclear accident from harming life for hundreds of miles around. Well guys there you have it, there's our top 10 most radioactive places on earth. What did you think? Now if you learned something new, anything at all then don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, we'd really appreciate that. And obviously I do want to hear from you all, do you enjoy hearing about radioactive things around the world? Should we make more videos like this in the future? Leave all your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, as ever my name is Danny Burke, make sure you have all subscribed and I'll see all of you in the next one.